Brazil. And our moderator for the conversation today will be uh, Eleanor Steele, one of the, the brainchild that got us all started with this. So let's see, uh, we are also as a reminder on Facebook Live. So if one of your friends did not receive the invitation to join the Zoom, remind them to go ahead and click on now to Facebook and they can watch the presentation and put comments there as well. All right, I think uh, we are ready, Yasmin, to get started. What do you say? All right. So once again, my name is Mary Conway Datoon. I am the faculty director for Global Links and I am a professor at the Kramer Graduate School of Business at Rollins College. And I'm happy to open our session today where we'll be talking to our Global Links scholars. So let's get started. I'm gonna share with you just a little overview of the presentation, let you know how we're gonna go through the webinar. Once I give you this overview, I'm going to just take a few minutes to explain what Global Links is for those of you who are on the call today who might not know that. And I'll do a brief introduction of my very good friend who I've met through Global Links, Eleanor Steele, who will moderate the conversation today. We're then going to ask some of our Global Links change makers and volunteers to introduce the scholars. As we said in the first seminar or webinar that we had, this is a really casual environment and a very inclusive environment. So we're not gonna worry about technology. We're not gonna worry about uh, getting the English exactly right, anything like that. We're just gonna have fun and we're gonna have a conversation. So to, to embrace that, we've asked the, the change makers, the students in each of their countries to introduce the scholars themselves. And then we'll jump into the conversation. A few things to think about while you are uh, listening to the webinar is first of all, we will take questions from the audience. So if questions come up, please go ahead and put those in the chat. And if we have time at the end, we will uh, get to those questions. I will look through the chat with the help of our program manager, Yasmin Mezba, and um, we'll pose some of those questions. Then I'll just have a few closing remarks and a bit of a teaser for our next webinar and heads up, all of you guys and gals watching us, at the end, we're gonna ask you to turn on your video because we wanna do a screen photo and capture everyone who is joining us on the Zoom call from uh, around the world today. So that's a heads up, get yourself ready for that photograph and we'll let you know when it's coming. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, I wanna tell you a little bit about Global Links. So, Global Links itself is a cross-cultural train-the-trainer program that operates in emerging markets. What do we do or why do we do this? What is our purpose? We work to inspire the next generation of entrepreneurs by empowering women through education and entrepreneurship. That's actually our tagline. What we really work for is empowering women and we do that through our partners in education and sponsoring of entrepreneurship. Speaking of partners, who are they? I mentioned that I'm from Rollins College in Winter Park, Florida, and we are uh, one of the, the academic arm of that sponsorship. We have online with us today, Rick and Susan Goings from the Rick and Susan Goings Foundation. They're the financial sponsors for us that are really helping us grow into the future. And in a true ecosystem format, we also have support from the government and the US Secretary of State's Office of Global Women's Issues. So entrepreneurship really works best when there's support from all of those ecosystems. Where are our locations so far? Well, here in the United States, as I mentioned, we're, we are in uh, Winter Park, Florida, just outside of Orlando. Our first scholar was from Iraq, uh, Baghdad. Uh, and then today you will hear from two scholars from India and our most recent scholar and students from Brazil. All told, when we run the Global Links program, it is a one-year commitment. So the scholars you're gonna hear from, they have committed to working across all three phases, first phase here in Orlando, second and phase back in their home country. And then in the third phase, we bring the students back to uh, Orlando and to Rollins campus for an immersion experience. So there's a big commitment of time for everyone involved in the program. What do the students do throughout this? Remember I said this is a train the trainer program. So we at Rollins College, we train the scholars who are coming to us from the emerging markets who you'll meet today. They in turn train their students. 
And the students in turn work with female em uh, entrepreneurs in their communities to support them in their business growth and in their growing self-confidence. So you can see it's a bit of a complex program, but it's a really fun one and it's a very high energy. Over the next five years, with the support of the Rick and Susan Goings Foundation, we will be expanding throughout Latin America. So currently you'll meet our scholar from Brazil and our next countries we're looking toward are Mexico and Colombia. So if you're out there from Mexico and Colombia, let us know. And if you um, know anyone in those countries who might wanna join us, please be sure to put them in touch with us. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen now and invite on our moderator, Eleanor Steele. Good morning, thank Hi. you, Mary. Hi, Eleanor. <laughs> thank so, you. So good to see you as always. Thank Can I you. tell the crowd a little bit about you? Oh, sure, just a little bit. <laughs> All right, so as I mentioned, I've gotten to know Eleanor a great deal through the program. The program has been in, in, in existence about 10 years now. And Eleanor's current role is a special advisor to the Rick and Susan Goings Foundation and the World Federation of Youth Clubs. Previously, she was a vice president and officer at Tupperware Brands, and she led the global communications and women's initiatives. This is how the connection really started between us. However, I have to say that Eleanor is also an alumnus from the Cromer Graduate School of Business at Rollins College um, in 01, I believe is your graduation year. So after she, between that 01 and how we met in 2011, Eleanor joined Rick Goings on the special assignment to Baghdad to assist Iraqi businesswomen create sustainable business opportunities. With this goal in mind, they really developed the global links. And because of the connection to Crummer and also Rick Goings serves on our board of trustees at Rollins College, they came to us as an academic partner, really with an idea. And they said, hey, what do you think? And um, I'm really happy that Rollins College was very supportive of that idea. And here we are today. Thanks, Eleanor, for taking us through in the, in the webinar and introducing us to the scholars and the students. Wonderful. So thank you, Mary. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here. And now we've asked some of our incredible change makers to do the honors of introducing the scholar from their country. So we'll start with Shersita. Hello. Hello, everyone. My greetings to all of you. Hope you all are fine. I am going to introduce someone with whom my journey in Global Link started, Dr. Shormishta Banerjee. Dr. Banerjee is a professor of business management at the University of Calcutta. Her teaching areas include management, human resource management, organizational behavior and entrepreneurship. Her research areas include small business management, microfinance and entrepreneurship, human resource management, organizational behavior, public policy and development, ethics in small business, environmental management, children's and women's issues. Dr. Banerjee has extensive international experience. She received a Fulbright scholarship in 2005 to be a visiting faculty member in the College of Business at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania. And then in 2012, she was a Fulbright scholar in residence at Monera Valley College in California. As the 2015-17 Global Link Scholar, Dr. Banerjee partnered with Bandhan Bank in Kolkata, India and she trained students to mentor 24 female entrepreneurs. Under her supervision, students mentored entrepreneurs to achieve increased business scale and professionalization, improved sales network, reduced environmental waste, and enhanced self-confidence and communication skill. I'm really thankful to work under the mentorship of Dr. Banerjee She's an inspiration for all of us. Thank you. And who's next? 
Uh, good evening, everyone, and good morning to the team in Florida. I'm Shohini Roy, and today I'm going to introduce Dr. Rupa Chakraborty, who has been my professor in college as well. Dr. Rupa Chakraborty has more than 17 years of teaching experience at Shishiksha and College in the fields of commerce, business, and entrepreneurship. As a faculty of an all-girls college, Dr. Chakraborty started an entrepreneurship cell at her institution in 2008 to provide training to young girls with a focus to empower them to become a job giver rather than a job seeker. Under her guidance and support, students of Shishikshayatan College actively took part in various entrepreneurial activities and skill development programs, which resulted in students identifying innovative ideas and solutions. As the 2017-18 Global Link Scholar, Dr. Chakraputti commissioned local students to mentor women entrepreneurs who were seeking to strengthen their small businesses. The impact of the program-based learning was transformational as the entrepreneurs were able to scale their enterprises and outreach within the community and even beyond. The students expanded their horizons by learning to emphasize with women from marginalized communities by understanding the pain points and hurdles they face and how they work to overcome them. I have personally learned a lot from Rumpa Ma'am over the years, and I'm really grateful to be her student. Thank you. Thank you. And Louisa? Hello, I'm Luisa Sariagini, one of the change makers from Brazil. Today, I will introduce a person who since the first day marked me with her energy, her professionalism, wisdom, and of course, her funny personality. I'm honored to have worked with her and learned so much from her. She is a true inspiration of women empowerment to me. And well, what can I say more? <laughs> Dr. Denise Delboni is a professor of labor law, compliance and labor and employment relations at Fundação Getúlio Vargas FGV, and also Escola Superior de Propaganda e Marketing, ESPM in Brazil. Dr. Delboni also works as coordinator of the personal management and labor compliance program at FGV Law School. She was a coordinator and professor at the 10,000 Women Program in partnership with the Goldman Sachs Foundation to qualify entrepreneurial women in Brazil. Dr. Delboni has a PhD and master degree along with degrees in law and business administration. She is the author of several published articles in national and international congresses, labor relations and collective bargaining in Brazil and, the, in, and in the European Union and corporate business law. As the 2000, sorry, as the 2019, 2020 Global Link Scholar, Dr. Delboni trained more than 30 students who in turn mentored 30 local female entrepreneurs in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Through her work, Dr. Delboni reached more than 700 individuals in the US and Brazil, who she introduced to social entrepreneurship and global links. Wonderful, thank you. Thank, oh. <laughs> That's wonderful, thank you so much, change makers. We're excited about this webinar because it's really an opportunity for us to gain insights from these accomplished leaders of global links in India and Brazil. These are the leaders who are fueling the entrepreneurial spirit. They're training business students to um, understand and learn the value of social entrepreneurship. And also coaching these students, the change makers you just met, plus many more, um, as they mentor entrepreneurs and small business owners, many who are women. If we were all sitting around a table today, Sharmista and Rumpa and Denise and Mary, we would have no problem over a cup of tea or a coffee, keeping the conversation flowing. I've been there with you guys, even on the calls, and um, there's hardly a, a moment in between or a breath between the conversation. So let's make that happen now. And I'm gonna start with my friend Sharmista. And I would really appreciate Sharon Mista as the first Global Link Scholar in India and in Calcutta. Uh, if you would tell us what Global Links brings as a new unique element into the education system there in India, and what is unique about Global Links that really attracted your students to be involved? Uh the unique part of Global Links, as uh, we all know, is that 
it allows students to think outside their classrooms. All that they learn in their books, they can actually take action with a real business. They go hands, hand in hand working with a real business. But another unique element of Global Links is that the students are matched with businesses and then there is no syllabus, there is no to-do list. <laughs> the students are allowed to study a live business, identify its problems, its trends, and suggest a path of action for that business. As a result, the students get a unique functional pedagogy and it's an experiential learning of what was in their textbooks. So that is a unique part of Global Links. And you asked whether, like, what made me get interested. I think uh, this, if I relate it to my teaching career and my life at this stage in my life, mm -hmm. I am more into a self-actualization mode. And uh, when I think of social entrepreneurship, I don't think of advocating social entrepreneurship only. I also think that I have a role in intervening in making social entrepreneurship work in a country like India, where there is immense potential to work in these lines and especially get the youth engaged. Thank you, yes. Eleanor. Absolutely, thank you. Rumpa, I'm gonna ask you a question uh, that I planned for, but before that, I would love to hear from you, maybe uh, as a springboard from, from Sharmista, what quickly, what was it that attracted you to the Global Links opportunity? Now, when I started my teaching career in 1999, I started with Shishik Shetan College and there I got an opportunity to to teach my students entrepreneurship. Now, those teachings were only from the books, the published materials, or, and the research papers, what I could get. But I didn't get any chance to work with the real life entrepreneurs. What I told my students are only theoretical. What are the examples I'm putting in the, into the class are from the you know, searching through the internet, through books and all what the stories I'm getting, I'm telling them. But when I got a chance, when I heard this uh, about this global links and I am lucky and I'm grateful to uh, Dr. Banerjee because Shurmishta is the one who told me about global links for the very first time. So when I heard about global links, it gives me, a, uh, you know, it's a lightning that yes, now I'll get a chance to work with real life entrepreneurs and I can go deep into the entrepreneurship. And that was the lightning force which forced mm -hmm. me to join Global Links. And yes, I'm happy and I am really grateful to Global Links that yes, Global Links has given me all the exposures and given me a new mission and new vision by working with real life entrepreneurs and training my students in that field. We are so thankful for that, Rumpa. And thank you, Sharmista, for introducing her to the Global Links program. That's a, it's all about relationships, and that is really how it works. Yes. So, Rumpa, I have another question for you. I understand, and some of this you just briefly touched on, that access to quality education remains a huge challenge for women in, and girls in India. So how then does Global Links offer, offer an alternative that provides the necessary training and skill set that's required for success. Here, I would like to add one thing that I am from a only girls college. I teach in a college where, which is renowned for only girls college in Kolkata. And here we get the mostly the students are from the Marwari business community. And they are very rigid in the sense that they don't want their girl child to be a part of their own businesses. But as these girls are mostly coming from business background, they have very good innovative ideas and they have their own, own ideas and they want to frame it up. So as when I got a chance to be a part of this Global Links program, I 
first spoke to my students from my college that do you want to join this program and the very answer i got from them is yes ma'am we want to do that so when they came to this program with their innovative ideas and all they started working with i won't say that they have mentored real life entrepreneurs but they have started working with real life entrepreneurs now here i would like to add one thing that when i uh, judged the you know the, the cultural difference between the entrepreneurs and the students i found there is a huge gap the society mm. the students belong to is totally different from the society the grassroots level entrepreneurs belong mm -hmm. so before going to the on field we have tried to give them some orientation some trainings mm. about their attitudes behaviors their dress codes and all so that mm. the entrepreneurs don't feel that they are someone coming from some other planets and advising them so we told them not to advise them you go you work with them you try to learn from them and on doing that you just try to give your theoretical knowledge a practical experience and they have started doing that and i am grateful to my students that they have started with them that as if they are their sisters their daughters and they are helping their own family members and you know entrepreneurship this global links is a co curricular program for our students mm -hmm. but when they started with a quality time involvement finally they have given their 100% time to the businesses and finally those businesses became our business with the entrepreneurs and still as the cycle is over still they are in contact with those entrepreneurs they are helping those entrepreneurs when i talk to the entrepreneurs they said that you know uh, shohini is calling me and giving me advice you know sanchari has given me this advice can i apply that so this is the story what i am getting mm -hmm. so this entrepreneurship this global links has opened up a new area for the students to apply their knowledge and at the same time it has given a positive valve to the students that yes you can apply the whatever knowledge you are gaining you give it to the society the society will be benefited which will benefit more and more women and they are doing that i'm really grateful to that but before ending my answer i would like to tell you one thing that mm. recently we are very much we are very much lucky to have now today in kolkata what i find is our domestic health they are also wanting their girl child to become a part of the school program yeah. earlier which was totally absent the you know my domestic help comes and ask me that i want to uh, give my daughter to a school i want her to be educated i don't want her to be a domestic help in future uh -huh. so this is a great thing coming up and i hope if global links is there if any other program like global links is there it will give up a positive uh, light to the society that's that's so it's um just so inspirational rumba and really glad to hear about the ripple effect that's come out of the work that that you and sharmista have done in calcutta and with your students we've met a number of them i know mary's met a lot more than i have but um they're all exemplary students and i think what's important to point out too that the results that you're seeing uh come from the work that these students are doing the these students are basically they're volunteers they give of their own time this is not class time this is not um a structured classroom uh program they don't get paid for their time but they <laughs> give their time because they really believe in the the uh value of entrepreneurship and and how they can help these women as as they've told us the stories of the individual women uh Uh, that they've worked with and there are some men too I should point out it's been uh they get as much out of the program as the entrepreneur does I think as as they build their businesses so thank you for pointing all those things out for us I'd like to move over to Denise now please and Denise you were the first scholar that Global Links had in Brazil 
and you are a brave soul. <laughs> Just and 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 uh, from the the time that we met you by video conference and did the interview, we knew that you were very special. And I realized later you weren't just a brave soul, but Denise, you're fearless. I mean, you go into everything, <laughs> jumping in at the deep end and, and a great personality and outlook and positivity in life too. So thank you. We're, we are so grateful for you as the first scholar in Brazil. So Brazil being a new uh, country for us to enter with Global Links, I'd love to hear from you what challenges you may have faced to starting the program in Brazil. Okay, so good morning, everybody. Good night, Ninja. <laughs> <laughs> to have a totally different time. And Eleanor, as I told you before, I feel really blessed to be part of this pro in this program. You know why? Because as you told, it's a kind of program related to relationship. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think, especially here in Brazil, we had opportunity to see a different kind of energy among the students. But I think the first challenge that we had was related to uh, entrepreneurs, to the female entrepreneurs, not related to students. Because when you teach, we have opportunities to see students inside class, but we can't feel that energy that we were able to see when they started the program. So mm -hmm. I, I was lucky to see this kind of engaged students. So any problem related to them. But talking about female entrepreneurs, most of them, especially the ones living in very poor sides of uh, our country, we have difficult to access them because it's very hard for them to, to be engaged in this kind of program, to be attached to this program, especially because they have to move to colleges, uh, they have to receive some students, sometimes they don't have this kind of concepts that we need to, to enhance, to develop uh, a business. So it was very difficult to have this kind of uh, uh, access to them. And secondly, I would say that it was very difficult to try to convince professors to come to us in the beginning because they didn't have an idea about the program. But after that, they were so involved. It was so <laughs> good to have them there. And we were sure that it was necessary to train these students too, especially because first I teach uh, laws here. But we had to give to them a different kind of comprehens uh, comprehension about business. And then we tried to prepare the students. We brought to them some KPIs. Uh, we used two, uh, a whole Saturday, set, uh, two Saturdays, the whole day, tried to training the, the students. So it was amazing to have that there. But in the beginning, it was a, a, a terrible situation. Louise and I was almost crazy, <laughs> we're almost crazy there, trying to look for different entrepreneurs to bring to join the program. Yes, and I, and I saw the results, Denise, uh, in their presentations that they made on the progress and the process that they used with the entrepreneurs, where they were um, probably very much like you. They were very brave and courageous. They were up on a stage and they had their PowerPoint presentations and they talked about all the steps they took with the different entrepreneurs to really help them um, grow their businesses. Some of them develop from the ground up. So um, it, was a, it was very obvious all of the time and the uh, training that you had put in with these students in the course of of Global Links in, in Brazil. Um, maybe you could give just a quick idea of what type of um, students and, and entrepreneurs that, that actually were part of the program there. And I know that you had the incredible, you know, when we talk about the fact that it's volunteer time and there's no pay for it, oh, and they don't get credit uh, for college, then you had 300 applications for this program. So maybe included in this, if you would just share with us how you narrow down to find the 20 or 30 that you would end up working with, because that is incredible result. It was, Eleanor, another challenge at the time. I told Louise, Louise, we have more than 300 students <laughs> trying to be engaged in this program and you have to choose just, just 20 of them. It's not fair. And with Denise, so you have to realize that we don't have opportunity to grow this number because you have to follow them. We have to go to visit the entrepreneurs, the female entrepreneurs. And I, I wanted to grow this number. 
So it was so important, Eleanor. I, I felt so touched, especially mm. in the first day of seminar, because we started the day at 8.30 in the morning and we went with the students until uh, I think about 5 p.m. And they were all there. In the end yes. of the seminar, I was all, almost crying because it's very difficult. Louise and Danielle knows about that. Yeah. They, know, they know about that, especially because it's very difficult, especially in Brazil, to try to keep the students inside the classroom. It's very mm -hmm. difficult. But at a certain time, we felt that they were touched by the program. So they were so engaged with this idea to make a difference that they were all there without any kind of payment, without, without any kind of promise. Of course, they knew that we have to choose five best students to be part of this kind of program in the third phase. But mm -hmm. even this way, all of them were there. And we have some, uh, um, some stories about students. Even nowadays, they were trying to multiply this kind of program. Luisa is one of them. Uh, mm -hmm. Daniela is wonderful. The first time that we went to visit the entrepreneur that she was responsible to mentor, uh, she was there. The entrepreneur was there full of different kinds of papers and design thinkings. But probably Daniela didn't have, have this kind of... Uh, um, I don't know, uh, knowledge uh, inside her classroom. So he went to look for this kind of information. Louisa is trying to give him uh, orientation or mentoring different women, especially those ones prepare, uh, preparing delicious food in Brazil. And uh, they are trying to help them even now after the program, even now during this kind of pandemic situation, so we, 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 can see, we could see that it was possible to bring these students uh, to this kind of um, program. But I'm not talking just about the program. I think the, bro the program opened their eyes to this yes. kind of possibility. And they felt that it was possible to realize what they were looking for. And I do believe, uh, Eleanor, just to finish this kind of uh, block, I do believe in a, a Confucio uh, cont quotation about things in general, about education. When you listen to something, you forget. When you see something, you remember. And when you do something, you learn. You definitely learn. So since they had opportunity to learn with this program, I think it was the kickoff. Yes. Because from now on, if they have this kind of energy, and I do believe, Luisa, Daniela, Louise, we're here. I do believe them. So probably they are going to multiply this kind of effect to the society. I do believe that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are such important points that you uh, just gave us, um, Denise. So I hope that everyone who's who's listening in, whether on this call or on, on a Zoom call or on Facebook, will make write those down and remember, especially as you're mentoring someone else, that, that it's not just hearing it and it's not just reading it or it's doing it. So thank you. It's just incredible what you've accomplished, the momentum and just the catalyst for the, the program in uh, Brazil. It's going to be exciting to see how it continues to develop and grow. Um, Sharmista, you mentioned uh, at one time to me that small businesses and entrepreneurs are obviously vital uh, when discussing and achieving positive social impact. Explain to me and the rest what that means to you. Uh, well, in India, the small businesses uh, are so placed that they mostly use local resources. Local resources meaning they lo use local supplies, they employ local people, as well as their market is also mostly local or regional, except a few who may be export internationally. So as a result, this entire ecosystem of the small business is very local specific. That not only creates a lot of economic advantage, but also brings in a social prestige for the small business entrepreneur. So the whole community looks up to the small business entrepreneur mm. and has a feel good approach because they are doing something for society. Most of these small business entrepreneurs are women. So that is an additional point because these women understand the challenges that women face in society mm -hmm. as well as in economic development as a whole. And therefore, as a result, these women who are in small business 
are able to create solutions, address the problems that other women in their society face. Finally, I would also say that these small businesses create a huge social impact because they're mostly concerned with cleaning their own backyard rather than painting the facade of the building, which is done by bigger businesses. So that way I feel the women in small business have a huge impact, not only in economic terms, but mm -hmm. also in social terms and generate huge social bonding among the ecosystem players in the neighborhood. And we, <clears throat> excuse me, we know that, that when women are working, it, economies grow and the more entrepreneurs <clears throat> and women in small business that, that you all are helping is, uh, especially there in Kolkata, is helping the economy of that community. So mm -hmm. it's you know, greatly appreciated. And I'm sure that you'll Thank continue you. to see the benefits, and especially even in the um, at the U.S. consulate there in, in Calcutta, they've been very supportive because of mm -hmm. the positive impact. Yes, very yeah. appreciative. They are very appreciative of the work Global Links has done. Wonderful. So, Rompa, you're now um, obviously a, an official member of our Global Links family. And I wondered after, after what you have seen and learned and, and experienced through the program, um, what more you feel like Global Links as an initiative can do to create positive change faster, uh, to scale it up quicker, and also to cross more communities and even countries? Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, yes, I personally feel that Global Link is a transformative program. It has given a space to everybody to become confident that yes, I can do. So if awareness of this Global Links program, if we can spread the awareness, then it will give a positive impact, not only to India, not only to Brazil, not only to Latin America, but to the whole world as the name suggests, global links so it will link everybody globally now global link already has completed three phases so now it is going through the fourth phase so what i personally feel is if we can build up a cohort where all the change makers you know the willing volunteers they become a part of it they exchange their ideas their views their mm -hmm. way of thinking a better world for others and they share with each other, it will give them a new platform. Not only that, in India, we have found that in Kolkata, there are some entrepreneurs who are very much willing to be a part of an entrepreneurial cohort where they knows how to, uh, you know, contact with the entrepreneurs outside India. There are very few though in the list, but there are some. So if we can build up a cohort of the entrepreneurs also, along with the change makers, then all the, these family members can build up a huge family and they can spread the awareness. And as we are lucky in Kolkata that we have already had a Global Links Alumni Connect program in 2019, where we got a chance to you know, connect more new entrepreneurs. And every now and then, when we are meeting new entrepreneurs, they are telling that, ma'am, when will the next program will be there so that we become a part of it? So if we can build up that awareness, if we can have more and more of Alumni Connect program like that, then that will make a community. And it will be a ripple effect. A small drop can build up a ocean. So when this awareness is spreading all over, so we will have a better world to live in. And yes, the woman power will win. And we know that the woman power is the most powerful uh, energy of the society. And we all believe that we, when we mentor a woman, when we educate a woman, we educate the whole system. So it's better if we build up a cohort and give them a chance to interact with each other, which will give up new thoughts and new ideas. 
Thank you. From, uh, we could we could almost just end right there. That was absolutely perfect. And I could see big smiles on the faces of the other people, <laughs> the other participants on the call, because they you said some things that really resonated with them. And uh, especially when you talked about woman power. Uh, and then also, um, it sounds to me like you are really uh, making a plan for how you can help society as a whole through this program. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, I, I, I'm really making a plan. I'm trying to give them a social platform. If, if, if uh, God permits, if I get everything in the positive, you know, because of this pandemic and all, I don't know how yes. much it will be, I'll be able to, but yes, I'm trying to do that. And I'm just trying to plan out if a social platform can be given. Well, I think that that each of you are having a big impact this, uh, today on this uh, virtual coffee table conversation, <laughs> you know, that so we're finding our way around this to the uh, what what business will look like what education will look like in the future. We've had to learn quickly with a steep curve to, to figure it out, but I think we're doing it. And I think that this this virtual uh, coffee table is a good example of how we can do that. Mm -hmm. Denise, tell me if you would, if you don't mind sharing, what personal benefits and achievements that you've been able to find with uh, the Global Links program. How did, how did you benefit from this initiative? Uh, there are lots of different ways to, to feel that, Eleanor. First, as I told you, I, I arrived in Orlando as a professor and I left Orlando full of ideas. <laughs> and I'm, I mean, it's very important. You know, I mean, especially in this kind of uh, our life, in this part of our life, as Charmise Ben Hupa uh, mentioned, I think it's very important for us to give another kind of energy, I, I don't, uh, another kind of view, point of view. And it was so important for me to be in touch with female entrepreneurs more than everything, because of course we don't have this kind of opportunity here. And in small businesses, as in Brazil and in India and in developing countries, they are kind of motor because they push the number of uh, new jobs every year. Mm -hmm. And I think it was very important to be in touch with them. I had to learn a lot and I think it was a, a brilliant opportunity for me. I think the second part, and I think it was so important to be in this kind of program, it was when I arrived in Brazil and my boss, Marcelo, invited me to, to be part of some uh, social programs here. And I, I was so surprised because I had never taken part in this kind of programs. <laughs> but I think they, they opened the eyes uh, for different kinds of possibilities here. And it was so important for me. And another very important achievement that I had uh, was to be in touch with engaged students, enthusiastic students. Mm -hmm. We're not talking about young not paying attention to society. We, I, I could feel, and this, this is different because sometimes we hear, we hear something about the student, a project, but at that time when I arrived in Brazil, I was in touch with engaged, real engaged students. And I would say, Eleanor, just to add them to finish this, uh, this answer, that I had the great opportunity to be invited to be a godmother for this Luis Pantini, <laughs> this guy in front of you here. Ah, <laughs> oh, I can see him Luis right Pantini. there. Ah, oh. he, asked, he invited me to, to be uh, his godmother. And I was so surprised with that because we didn't have a, a close relation. But because of the program, uh, Eleanor, mm -hmm. I think we could feel the best of each other. And I think it was so important to be in touch with different ideas. What, what kind of thing we have to do here, Louise? And then he's, oh, I was paying attention to that, da, da, da. And because of that, I don't know, I have <laughs> a godson. So yeah. I was so enthusiastic about that. This is, a, this is about the relationship. This is about, about opportunities. Uh, I think it's so beautiful. Love the relationship between some very, ah. Yeah. yeah. It's oh, a beautiful okay. thing. It's a beautiful thing. And I, that must have been such an incredibly unexpected bonus. Uh, wonderful you. young man such as, as Louise. And um, obviously you brought out the best in him and he brought out the best in you. And, 
and uh, you you have that incredible bond and relationship. Uh, that's that was an unexpected benefit of, of the program we hadn't accounted on, but I I wouldn't trade that for anything. That's wonderful. How and how did that make you feel? Uh, I was, you know, Eleanor. I don't have kids. I don't have children. I was crying now. <laughs> I well, yeah, children. I know. I'm having a hard time myself. <laughs> I think I think every time that you you feel recognized uh, by a young person, especially by a young person, even though I'm an old one now, uh, I think it's so important uh, to say, to note that you can bring some difference uh, to them into their lives. And I, I felt that this was a, uh, an opportunity that I had because when Louise invited me, I was so surprised and I was so touched by that. But I felt like everybody probably in the program would invite me to the same. <laughs> because if uh, he, uh, who was so close to me, was able to, uh, to see this kind of uh, characteristics that he loved, <laughs> I don't know, probably the <laughs> others uh, were going to see the same, the same characteristics. Mm -hmm. And I was so touched by that. And he invited his mother to know me. So I felt like a uh, teen. It was uh, again this kind of feeling that you see among uh, among young people, and I, I felt so good. I don't know. I need this kind of children. I need this kind of babies, especially because at this time, that at this age that we we are, yeah. I think this kind of renovation is mm -hmm. such necessary for us. I think it was so important. I don't know. I'm so happy, Luis. You were uh, another another blast. <laughs> uh. Yeah. Well, that, that's a, a wonderful story. I, I could ask, you know, we could just continue to round robin and ask questions, but I believe that we have some questions that are coming from uh, the chat or from perhaps some of the uh, change makers. Mary, are we ready to move over to the students or Yasmin? Yeah, well, um, first everyone is, is um, is very happy and excited and rubbing a, a, an eye to hear the great story that Denise <laughs> just shared. And, and I know that if we asked all of the, the entrepreneurs and the scholars and the students, um, we would have also very similar moving stories because Global Links really is about relationships, the relationships we build with all of our sponsors and um, Dr. Rumpa, right? Rumpa, you mentioned uh, something that I, I, I want to call out before I get to our change makers for questions. Um, because, you know, we talk about entrepreneurship working in an ecosystem. And uh, you mentioned the, the 2019 uh, Alumni Connect. And we have on the call change makers from Global Links. And we also have another program that has grown out of the success and the incredible work that that the scholars are mentioning that the students do, which is called the Chain of Change 2020. And so we have several students on the line and they've identified themselves, some of them in the, in the chat, so you can check. And they're from outside of Calcutta as well. So West Bengal, um, uh, different, uh, different uh, the three, now of course my mind has just gone blank, but the three schools that we have, North Bengal University, um, help me out, Dr. Banerjee, Sharmista. Tej, Tejpur University. Thank you, Tejpur University. And Gohati, Gohati. And Gohati, we have a Gohati. And we have the change makers from all three of the scholars here. And all of this, this growth, this energy that you're hearing, um, the U.S. Consulate in Calcutta and the Consul General Patty Hoffman and the Public Relations, Monica Shi, they have done so much to support this work. And as we Denise has started this great uh, energetic beginning in, in Sao Paulo. We think we're going to see that same growth and energy come from the students, uh, from the entrepreneurs. And, and, and so that will even um, kind of grow a, a, a little bit more. So as you can see, I'm just really excited. And now that I've been unmuted, but I'll try to control myself. <laughs> which the students who know me really know that that's a little difficult for me. Um, but I, I do want to, maybe we have just a, a time, Eleanor. Um, mm -hmm. we, we, the students are very shy this morning. They're not sending us too many questions. So um, I don't know why that is, but um, could, could I ask a, a, a question? Would Of course. 
Would absolutely. that be all right? Yes, okay. absolutely. So I want to ask the scholars each to think about if you were going to give one message to your students and to the entrepreneurs, uh, right? We're in a really difficult time. We know relationships are really important. Rumpa, Denise, Sharmista, what kind of word of encouragement would you would you give to the the students and the and the entrepreneurs and 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 the future scholars who maybe want to join in with some of the activity of uh, of global links? And I see Denise is muted, Yasmin, so we might have to unmute her. Who wants to start? Denise, that was just a I, thumbs up that you're muted, but go ahead and start anyway. If I had to give any kind of tip, Mary, related to this kind of program, I would say be empathic. And because I feel that when you have a, a normal, regular routine, you don't pay attention to others. I think this is the question related to everybody. We look like individualist people and we are not. I think we are social people. So I would say be empathic, be engaged, be part of society because we don't feel like that. I'm going to teach and I have to pay attention only to my students. I'm going to, to say, no, 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 we have to pay attention to everybody around. And I think we will, we will be able to find problems. We'll be able to solve problems. And I think wow. this is the way we have to be perceptive much mm -hmm. more. That's beautiful. Wow, thanks, Denise. Yeah. Sharmista Rumpa, what do you think? Uh, I have thought that while we're discussing, we enjoy this empowering experience and I want everyone to be part of it. Wonderful. Rumpa? And what I feel is, I will say that be positive. Try to give a positive name to you, the dream you are having. Um, okay, great, great words. Thanks, uh, Eleanor, for letting me sneak in a, an, in a question there. Of course. Um, Unless Yasmin tells me different, we don't have any questions from our students. So students, entrepreneurs, Sangeeta, uh, if you have any question, now can, can be the time. You can type it in or we can unmute you for a moment. I, I have a question to pose to uh, Sharmista, if you don't mind, and we can close with this. But Sharmista, I know you talked uh, with me one time about the impact that Global Links had had on you and had on your students, and and it was a personal note, but how you benefited, what you learned from it. Would you mind sharing with what you shared with me? Um, yes, right since the time I was studying business, teaching business studies, I had this question in my mind, can business do good while doing well? Mm. And as I progressed in my global links journey, I really got this answer that a business can satisfy all stakeholders as well satisfy society at the same time. So I really feel that a business can do good while doing well too. That, that has been the big question for everyone. And it's <laughs> important that, that it, all, it's, all stakeholders are included. Thank you for sharing that. I knew Thank it was a personal so note. Mm -hmm. Great. So I have two things left to do, Eleanor, if I can in the three, two or three minutes that we have left. Um, the first thing that I wanted to do was to ask everyone to sort of very quickly put on, remember I said there would be a photo Right, and we have two screens. We have um, about 30 participants. So we have two screens. And one of our uh, Global Links graduate assistants, Juliana Angaro, who's online here, is gonna take a photo. So if you guys will put your videos on for a quick minute so we can get the photo and let's give Juliana enough time to do both screens. So everybody put your, your picture up there. It's so great to see. Oh, there's Rick and Susan, Victoria, Arijit, where are you? Coming, coming. All right, excellent. Roshini, okay, almost there. So exciting. Oh, Marissa, it's great to see you. 
Luisa, we lost you. Come back. I have okay. everybody, but I still have some screens that are off. I know Shoshita said she's having Thanks, some connection Lisa. problems, so we won't wait for Shoshita. We'll just uh, send her love. Oh, okay. So let me go to the other. So good to see you guys all. Big smiles. You yeah. let us know when you're taking it, Juliana. Okay, let me just... What happened to the second screen? Just one second. So let's all smile on three. So one, two, three. Great, thank you so Great. much. If thank you need you. to for bandwidth, turn it off. Um, but if you don't need to, that's okay. Feel free to, to leave it on. Um, there's Shomita, who I had mistaken. Now that I see her beautiful face, I know she's an, uh, uh, one of our students. I'm gonna do a quick share screen again, and then we'll come back and see all of your faces. I want to share um, the screen here and just give me a second to get to my last slide here because I want to announce our next uh, webinar. So on August 18th, so you see what's happening here, once a month on a Tuesday at 8.30 in the morning here in Orlando, we have a conversation around some different themes. And our next conversation, I'm very excited um, for both participants in it, President Grant Cornwell, who I know some of the students on, on the call have had a chance to meet. If you've not had a chance to meet him, you need to be back with us again and hear he's truly a leader. Um, and he's taken, he'll be able to talk everything about his background to managing and leading a, um, a college. And even through these times, managing in difficult times like a COVID. And, we have a special moderator who is going to join on that call and that is Susan Going. So mark your calendars for August 18th at 8.30. And of course you see there online, if you're not already following us on Facebook or LinkedIn, or if you have any questions and wanna email us directly or check out our website, um, I want to, to leave those up there for just another second. So you have time to mark your calendars. And then I'm going to stop the share and just close by calling out a few people who maybe are on screen now that we can uh, have them give a little wave who have really, because we said Global Links is about relationships and, and recognizing the people who have really contributed to where we are. So I'm going to stop my share and just have a quick call out to some people who are still in the video. So put yourself in gallery view so you can see everyone. And we'll just give a wave as I call you out. So we have our program manager, Yasmin Mezba, who is also a graduate of, of Crummer and started as a graduate assistant. And we have our two graduate assistants here, currently MBA students at uh, Crummer. So Selena Danvers, there's Selena and Juliana Angaro, our photographer. And um, I wanna call out also Abira, I think I see Avira, uh, she's not on screen right now, but it just says Avira, Avira Roy, who was our program manager in, in India. There's Avira, uh, who is our program manager in India and um, did some fabulous work getting us uh, started and continuing there. And then I wanna call out the change makers, but I'm afraid to put myself. So Luis Fantini started with us as a graduate assistant uh, in, um, in Sao Paulo, he's a student at FGV and is now a change maker. So we're looking to see him uh, come very quickly. And then um, all the other students online are either are change makers. So if you're a change maker, give a quick wave. And that means that you were selected to come to phase three. There you are, Shomita. There you are, our volunteers. Oh, there's Victoria is back, excellent. And our 2020, so the students we are currently working with in India from Calcutta and outside of Calcutta and North Bengal and Tishpur and Guwahati, give us a wave. There you are, excellent. And of course, we see Rick and Susan going there as well. So thank you so much for, for joining us. 
And with that, I'm going to say thank you to Eleanor. As always, just an incredible conversation. I love the visual that you gave us for the coffee table conversation. So I'm going to carry that forward for my day. It's going to help a lot. And okay. everyone give a, a good virtual round of applause to our scholars who really are, Rick, right? Force of nature, force of nature, who keep all of the activity going. So Sharmisa Banerjee, Rumpa Chakraporty, and Denise Delboni, thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you all and all your friends on August 18th with Susan Goings moderating a conversation with uh, Rollins College President Grant Cornwell. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a wonderful day and a tremendous evening. Thanks.